All right, we're here at the night two of the Australian Spring Car Championship. What an honor race. We had James Inglis all the way from Perth take out the win, but we also have Brock Hull at the highest points. We've got Callum Williams behind us, ran a top 10. He is top 10 in points. I'm going to go have a quick chat with him and see how his night went and then move on and try to get some other drivers. All right, we're here with Callum uh, after night one, top 10 in points, I believe that. Um, got through a feature. How was, was that a relief or what? It definitely was. Um, yeah, got, got 30 laps under my belt or 25 laps under my belt, so felt felt comfy out there but still not as comfy as I, I, I should want to feel um, just you know um, feature race here four times and only doing 30 laps ain't, ain't enough so we've got another chance at it tonight we're seventh in points we've got the opportunity to pass a few cars in our heat race and maybe even start further up so um, pretty excited to get out there with the seventh heat the track hopefully will be you know a bit slickened up and wider for us as well and pretty excited to get out there and see what we can do would you say in the A main, you said you felt comfortable and not as comfortable. It looked like you started really good, then it's just like got a bit ruddy or, you know, cars come in and got in your way and you got a bit unsettled and it's just a lot of laps are warnable but feature laps are very different to heat race laps where they're hammer down, hammer down, hammer down. Yeah, that's that's it. It's, um, it's hard to, to get any momentum when, you know, I, I was doing my roll-up laps and I gave it a bit of a squirt and I plugged it into the wall on my rolling lap. So it's pretty hard to then get momentum or, or in your head to go out there and stand on it again. So we, we had a good good start of the race. We, we passed a few cars on the very first lap and then sort of from there, the, the track changed pretty quick as well with the ruts and I, I didn't feel as comfortable as I, I thought I would be um, personally myself. And mentally, I didn't want to go out there and, and put it into the wall and, and then, you know, not be in the chance to start in the A main. Um, so it was just sort of just see how the car was and it, it, it was uh, good enough, but it wasn't mentally right for me. Now, with the uh, system we got tonight, there's no hot laps before your heat. Just end start, get ready for heat race. Was that similar to last year's? And you ran a top three last year, and similar in points, I'm assuming. What's the mentality of going, wow, I don't even have a feel of this track. i just got to go and pass a car at least. Yeah, well, I've got the green light from the boys, so meaning I can go out there and stand on it. Um, if we do any mistakes, well, you know, we're over here to race the Australian tile. So if I'm making mistakes and destroy a car, that's, that's just what happens. So got the green light to just stand on the gas and, and see what it can do. Um, most times I hit the track, the car's fine, so I just need to trust in the car a little bit more, probably get up on the seat a little bit more myself and, and actually uh, do some quick quick laps in it and um, really feel what this car can do around this track. All right, mate, well, hopefully if you don't get the one, you get another top five and that's two in a row. So good luck, mate, and Cheers, stay mate. safe. All right, so we just spoke with Callum. Let's go on a quick pit walk. Try and maybe get a word with a few drivers. If not, let's just roll around, show all the fans. We might even get some words with some fans. So a few driver changes, we've got like Brock Hallett over here, Veely's in a similar spot, um, but there's less cars, there's only about 12 cars didn't make the show from last night, so come this way a bit more, stay a bit closer, we're just moving on. Um, so as of last night, about 10 to 12 cars did not make tonight at all, all we're doing like Callum, we spoke with Callum then is, is engine start and heat, there's about six heat races tonight. Um, if you didn't make the bubble, the heats are really stacked tonight, like uh, there's a heat race literally tonight with um, Jamie Veal, Brandon Quinn, James McFadden, uh, Grant Anderson and Tate Frost, all in one heat race, like that is, that is the hardest heat race I think I've seen all night. We've got Tate Frost over here, we spoke to him the other day at the Classic, uh, we've got some late models, Lockie McHugh on the right there. But it's really good, the packs are like, it's, it's calm but it's also fan time right now, which is really cool. We'll keep rolling over here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da -da. Keep rolling. Who we got? We got Jordan over here, Chargy. See if he's there. No, I can't really see him. We'll try get. I don't know. Actually, did I see Jock? Where's Jock? I can't see him. Don't exactly know where he is. We'll try find him. I want to try get a word with James Inglis as well. Last night's winner. Another Perth guys. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, got James. Du, du, du. Hey Josh, is uh, James around? Uh, he might be. Or is he floating somewhere else? Come back later. If not, so good. No, I think he's got the drive, mate. I think he's They're all heading up? Yeah, I think Alright, all, all good. Thanks, Josh. Maybe drivers breathing and they're all starting to move. I don't know. Could have just got told a fib. Oh well. 
Uh, and uh, Cam Waters. Cam Waters got really unlucky last night with that right front. Apparently, I spoke to his crew last night. Right front stop just broke, just before the A main. So, but he's still really good in points. So he got lucky with that type of thing. Oh, it is chaos here with fans. Like I said, it's, it feels like right now, like after the pit, after the racing, really. That's how it feels with all the fans are in here. But I think everything's going to start moving. As you can see, it is so windy right now. It does have an effect on the track in a different way, like it blows off a lot quicker. But here at Warnable, it's a little bit different. It's um, because the track hasn't been able to hold moisture. Instead of blowing off, it takes rubber. So right now, instead of your usual dustier track that blows straight off, this one um, has been getting to the top and the, a little bit different like that. So that's been interesting in itself as well. Um, a lot of guys didn't really change their spots. A few of the bit, like bigger teams did, like Brock went from here to here. That's just obviously, the quicker they come in off there, they get to look at their car a lot quicker too. They've only got to cut their engines off like, like literally just before the toilets over there and all the rest is rolling around. So while we're here, we'll go get a look at the track. I didn't get to see, didn't get to see where Jock's car is unless I'm completely blind. I don't know, I did not see that. So I'll have to try to get one with him later. I want to get one with the current Australian champ. So I think the driver's briefing is starting shortly. We're moving on now. Fans are all going to be moved out soon. I forgot my watch. Pit walk for the public will be ending in just less than 10 minutes. Okay, so time. 10 minutes so, for the pit walk. Uh, we can sort of start over the next couple of minutes. Uh, we'll go look at the track we'll quick, see how that the, looks, the as we always do. Get out of it. Absolutely <laughs> blowing a gale. This is the windiest it has been here at Warrnambool. I hope you guys can hear me. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely blowing a gale right now. Oh, you dropped your sunnies? I'll go get them. <laughs> Absolutely, that is how windy it is. Thanks. Thanks, bro. They might be a bit stressed. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely blowing a gale right now. Incredible. We'll have a quick look at the track. So, there's not as much water as last night. You just stick it through there, have a quick look at it, right through there. There's not as much water as last night. Last night the water was literally just sitting on top of it. But they're gonna get out there and roll it soon and I, I dare say maybe even scratch it again. Crowd's a lot busier tonight. What are you hiding up here for? What are you hiding up for your feature race winner? Yeah. How are you mate? Cody, Hi. nice to meet you. Yeah, um mate, last night real quick, how good was that? Was this your if I was right first win at Warnable? Yeah, yeah, definitely. First time I've stood up there, so yeah, it's pretty cool to get the prelim night um, against some really good drivers in a stout field obviously so yeah just trying to back it up tonight try not to get too nervous and um, obviously got a long way to go so just try and lock it up the front of that show somewhere and then that'll give us a good opportunity to battle it against the best. Have you had a look at uh, your heat rates yet? I believe you're out of is that position six? Yeah so it's another inverted heat so we've still got a, a lot of work to do move forward in our heat and the other guys out of six will be doing yeah, the same in there. Heat, heat racers trying to move as far forward as they can to give them, give ourselves the best uh, starting position as possible. Would you say time trials obviously helped a lot, but that heat race number one where you just went straight to second and got moving really set up your night? Yeah, I think so. That was that was probably the big one that I knew we had to move forward on such a, a track that was so heavy and fast and it was hard to move forward. So we just got a really good start and I think that um, set the rest of the night up really. Um, well, besides sponsors, was there anyone else you would like to thank? And um, yeah, leading in tonight, what do you think this track is going to go? Um, Track-wise, I think it's going to be still pretty hard to pass from six, so we've got to get another good start. It's going to be pretty heavy early on as well. So um, I think, yeah, the guys from the third row are going to be pushing pretty hard to at the start of the races to move forward and just can't thank um, Diamond Bay Motorsport enough for the opportunity. It's um, still pinch myself every time I hop in the car and um, there's been some great drivers go through the car and um, I'm just glad to get the win from last night and Paul and um, Paul back home in WA is watching and he, he rang me last night, I was pretty stoked so yeah just awesome to do it for them. I know it means a lot to you but I'm going to ask you anyway, what would it mean to put the number one on the car for the team and also yourself? Yeah, I haven't really thought that far ahead to be honest, but um, it would mean 
it would mean a lot. Um, my, my grandpa's been a life member at this club and um, I'm obviously born and bred in WA, but to come back to this, um, to this track and to put an A1 on it would mean everything. All right, mate, appreciate it. Good luck tonight. Stay safe. Thanks, Thanks mate. James. Um, all right, then, that'll pretty much wrap up our pit walk for night two of the Australian title. We wanted to start with James, we actually ended with James, which was really awesome. Um, I'll be following it like I have been, following the heat races, uh, and try to get some more drivers' interviews during the night. All right, so it's 5.15 now. We've had all the drivers' briefings for the sprint cars and the late models. Uh, in about 15 minutes, uh, heat one, two, and three are going to come out for engine starts, roll back in the pits, and then the same for three, four, and five. There's going to be no hot laps tonight. They're just going to get a few laps for the heat race, and we're going right back into heat racing. But uh, like I said, sorry, it's four, five, and six. There's only six heat races tonight, and they're absolutely still wet in this track. We'll go check the track out. They've scratched it. They've even had the aerator out there, like punching holes in it. It is wet as, so let's go check that out. Alright, here with the reigning national champion, uh, Jock Goodyear, mate, title defence tonight, uh, how do you feel rolling into the first heat? Uh, yeah, pretty good, um, just got to, you know, keep my nose clean here is the main thing and, you know, try to pick a cu couple cars off and still set ourselves in the front, you know, couple rows of this A main and then, yeah, the job's on from there. Um, last year, obviously in Perth, um, is it the same feeling, obviously leading into point situation, we up the front and, you know, what's it like knowing this heat race, you just got to get through it? Um, yeah, I think last year we were very similar sort of position. I think we we're fifth or sixth. So yeah, no, and then I had a good heat race at this, well, this night last year. And um, yeah, it's just the main thing. We've got to try to do that again and yeah, <laughs> just keep this nose clean. Uh, now, uh, five other people have gone back to back. Um, we've got the likes of Gary Rush, Steve Brazier, Gary Brazier, Brooke Tatnell, Kerry Madsen, and I believe it was Dave Murcott. What would it like to put this uh, car in those names? Yeah, it'd be cool. It would definitely be sick and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big achievement to be able to do something like that and those list of names, you know, to join, we'll put my name with them. So yeah, we're just going to give it our best, put our best foot forward and, you know, see what we can do. I want to quickly talk about the A-Main last night. Um, you were doing this absolutely ridiculous line from three and four, cutting down, making the straight really long. Is that something you've done here before or you just felt it and just had a crack at it? No, I've done that a few times now, the last, you know, couple of years. Sort of been watching a lot of people in America, you know, be able to nail it. And, um, yeah, it's sort of been working on it, working on it, had the last few races. And, yeah, last night it was in because we could get off the straights pretty low and, yeah, get a real good run out. So, no, I had really, it sort of worked really well. It sort of faded start, like, like, late in the race, but, yeah, still, it was still good. Okay, and going into one, do you know where the drivers come in and out of the track? There's that massive hump. Yeah. How do you prepare yourself and is that early in the night or it's like later in the night it just really comes around and do you feel it when you're rolling around before an A-Main or late in the heat race? Uh, you can see them, yeah you can definitely see the the wolf there coming in and um, but it's, I, don't, I mean it, it, it is pretty sketchy but it does add a bit of character to the track at the end of the day and you know makes drivers think to if you're going to go through it like yeah it will be quicker but it, yeah it might suck into the fence and that'll be the end of you but yeah, we were running up in there, start of the A, and then sort of I decided to probably knock it down a little bit and just sort of cheat the holes a bit. But yeah, all in all, still pretty happy with what we had, and yeah, the package is good through there. All right, mate, good luck tonight, and I hope you keep the A1. No worries, thanks. Oh, yeah. Right now, behind me, we've got heat one and two going out there for engine starts. I guess they're going to do a little bit of wheel packing just for the engine start, roll back inside, and I think come straight back into the pits. Um, but I'm assuming they would want to keep the motor running out there. I don't know yet. Yeah, we're going to find that out right now.
National Lamproom's over. We're going heat racing. Heat race number one rolling out now. Ready to go for our first And there we have it. Brock Hallett did exactly what he needed to do. Started sixth, got up to third on a very hooked up track. Cam Waters got up to fifth, one spot only. So Brock Hallett really got some good points there. One, heat race number two. Uh, the track is very fast compared to heat race number one. It's worn in now. It was very one lane. Uh, Inglis did it not move up. He stayed in position number six. So it didn't hurt him, but it didn't help. And he's still going to be okay in points, but he didn't lose the spot. Uh, but yeah, this heat race, they're just going to get harder and harder to pass right now. As uh, Brock got advantage of some guys when, you know, they weren't as good on the, uh, a bit of a, let's say, not worn in track, but now the track's very worn in, but now we've got a really big heat race here. We've got Bealey and McFadden in it. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're the two big names. Oh, and Luke Dillon right now. So this one's going to be on like a donkey call. And there it is, heat race number three in the books. Andrew Priolo holds on for that one. Uh, James McFadden gets up from fourth to second, and uh, Jamie Veal goes from sixth to fourth. So move forward. All positives for those two, especially Vili, top three in points. Uh, now it comes down to Jock. Jock's out of six in heat race number four. So if he jumps to even to third in his heat race, he moves ahead of uh, Jamie Veal in the points. So uh, very important heat race here for Jock. The track suits him now. It's uh, starting to move up, and he's got the best car to get up to the top and really rip around, especially being out of six. I'm um, expecting him to do a big move in uh, turn one and two, so we're going to try to get that on camera. Unfortunately, another big wreck to finish that heat race. Peter Dukas was running in second. Jock was chasing him in third, and uh, out of nowhere, something must have broke on that car, and he sent it right into the wall, coming out of four in, um, coming to the checkered flag. So we're going to get this coming on the crane. I uh, hope he's all right. Uh, that's two big crashes in uh, two race meetings. But uh, Jock, that gave Jock second place, so exactly uh, the same points as what Brock would have scored. So big for the current Australian champ. Chris Sullivan wins heat race number five. Uh, unfortunate event for Moroski and Pesca in front of Alex Hall, but Alex Hall benefits and drives all the way up to second. So a really good point for Alex Hall, last heat race rolling out right now.
number six in the book. All the heats are done. Tim Hutchison gets the win, but what a race for third. Manders, Williamson, McHugh. Williamson got by McHugh and just tagged the ball coming out of three and four. And it put him back, but then he got Manders back. So he was definitely the better car than McHugh there, but he just got unlucky. Drove it a bit too hard in one and two, but he still moved up a spot. And McHugh went from sixth to third, pretty much in the first lap. It was a ripper run. So we got through all the heat races. The late models were just out there for heat race number two. And then the radar was showing nothing, but now it's absolutely like, how would I explain it? Like light rain, but very fast and windy. Like very specky. It's like a water truck is throwing mist on you. But the race cars have stopped. Obviously, I think they're coming back in from the, from the track. Late models heat race number two. A lot of guys that I think haven't really, uh, like in the back of the season, these may pack up, because they're gonna be used as wheel packers later, and you don't wanna be that. So the late models are out on the track right now. I think they're getting called back in. Right, so that literally lasted like 10 to 15 minutes, but now it's completely gone. Very windy and cloudy though. The uh, scratch is going back out on the track. Then we just have the late models to, uh, do heat race number two and then I think we're moving into our sprint car mates. But yeah, it was a lot of rain, but like, like I said, just more the wind made it look worse. So, um, go look at the cars are absolutely drenched. Teams are rushing to cover all their seats. It came real quick, but let's hope we can get the show back on the road. All right, rain's gone, we're back racing. Late models are back out, but then we already have ready to go. They're gonna push these main through. The E-Main is on the dummy grid now for the sprint cars, so. Go check the track out with the late models on it and see how we go. Sprint car E-Mains in the book, Jordan Ray and Dennis Jones move on. All the rest pack up for the Australian title. The D-Main is straight on the field. It should be a racing one. They've got Tate Frost and uh, jo uh, Jai Corbett in it as well. They're two, two big names. Uh, 
they haven't had the best weekend. Jackson Delamont in there as well. Hopefully they, um, it's a real race here. The track's very fast now. It's got a top and a bottom, so. Uh, also, Rusty Hickman's in there as well, so it should be a very fast um, day, mate. Alright, so we had a big wreck in the uh, D main, three cars involved, Ben Morris, uh, Ricky Maolo and uh, Dane Court. Uh, the cars aren't too pretty, Ben Morris went pretty high up in the air, hope he's alright. It's an open red situation now, they're only one left down, but um, we're going to get the car coming in on the hoist and uh, see how bad it is. Hopefully he's alright, he is walking out, so... Check out this car right now. Like, there's barely any A main drivers in the pits. They're all watching the track every lap through these mains. So I don't know what track they're going to do. If they do any, but all the drivers are not in the pits, which is uh, pretty cool. But it's very eerie in the pits when the racing is not on, which is uh, tensions building. delay then Dane called unfortunately had a really I believe I don't know what he had a really big injury the ambulance is here hope he's okay he's in the ambulance now um, he is going to hospital so I hope, yeah, prayers for him I hope he's okay um, but now the D main is finally back and engines are rolling um, paramedics are back out in the field and uh, yeah I just really hope Dane calls okay that's all that matters right now uh, the late models have lost a pole shuffle now but again, who cares as long as Dane Court's are okay. Uh, and the spring car Debo is on the track now, rolling around again. All right, Tate Frost won the D main at Jai Corbin. They both transferred. Now we've got the C main rolling out. D main in the books, Brody Appleby and Cody Morosky both transfer out of the C main. The B main is rolling straight out of way. We've got some big names in there now, like Marcus Dumsey and Kerry Madsen. So let's see how they can get through today, mate. is set what a drive from Kerry the madman Madsen I believe he started I think he started 13th but he got up to like 9 4 6 in the first lap got to second rubber started to come in turn three and four but now that's it that's the Kerry Madsen we've been missing for the Australian title uh, the A main set uh, Kerry Madsen Brett Milburn Luke Dillon and Sam Walsh got Matt Dumsey on literally the last lap so now Dumsey is a reserve car but it's set and the Victorian uh, late model titles going out now and all the pits are all starting to get moving and they're getting called to the dummy grid, so here we go. Right, Phil, we're here with the A1, mate. The uh, legendary day show winning car. How does it feel to be in it? Does it feel take you back to that day or what? Feels like home, to be honest. Yeah, very comfortable. Um, how did this come about? Did you just get a phone call? Uh, well, I, I restored my midget a couple of years ago and I always kept the chassis and a few bits and pieces from it. Uh, and I thought it'd just be good to have the two A1 cars restored. Um, look mate, I bet it's going to be awesome out there. I want to get in quick before the label will start going. Um, how does it feel? Um, really appreciate you bringing it out here and I hope you have the ball out there with the firework rolling around. I want to take the provisional stars, so I might take them to the rear. Well, you know,
Cameras are on the dummy gear. They've told them to pretty much suit up, ready to race. I think we're gonna have a real quick short um, presentation here or four wide and get racing. They're trying to push this race in. Late model's about to finish right now. So yes, as you see, we had a random rain just piss through. Um, but yeah, no, it pretty much only lasts like five, not even 10 minutes. Uh, the officials have changed their tactic now. Now Dave Murcott is awarding their a main starting medals on the dummy grid. The drivers are ready to go while they get the track ready. And then, yeah, something very different and new, but that's what they do. They change things on the fly here at the Australian Total, especially Warnable. Look at the size of that front wing. How is that legal? That is insane. So right now, they were already gonna do uh, track where scratching the top and bottom, but now the rain's come out. All the drives, some of the drives are out of their car, and let's see what uh, they're doing. It's still like they're just doing the same system, but a lot more cars are out there. I've done that last year. couldn't hear that driver's briefing. What they're doing right now is they're gonna push every car out in the infield. They're gonna have 10 car hot laps. The crew's gonna be out on the infield. They're gonna have two minutes to make changes. Um, but yeah, 10 cars at a time to do hot laps and make changes and then hopefully go racing. The track's gonna be very hooked up and fast. Be very surprised if anyone out of the top four, maybe even top two, didn't win tonight. Second group of the A main rolling out there. That hot lap, the first group, very wet track, did not sound pretty. I didn't even film it. I should have, but let's hopefully this wears the track in and uh, we get going racing in the Australian title. are all done uh, I think we're going racing but unfortunately on the last set of hot laps there James McFadden motor let him down and he is out of the uh, Australian Sprint Car Championship and that just sums up his uh, Australian season I think just a lot of bad luck and let's get some racing going eh who's going to be the A1 is Jock going to keep it or are we going to see a new Australian champ?
go. I was wrong. Lockie McHugh out of position six drove the absolute ass off that race car and now we have a new Australian Spring Cup champ. I thought Jock had it there but McHugh's car just came on right at the end and wow, that's what an Australian champion car does and that's how he wins a race. Unbelievable, non-stop 40 laps, wide open. What a race. The track did the best. Uh, they cared to get a racetrack and wow, I know it was hammered down but there was still some passing and they caught lap cars literally in 54 seconds or something so that was pretty crazy. What a weekend is right, Drake York and thank you for your support over the years. Absolutely brilliant. Nice lead for all of us. You see there the top four cars again just like last night have to get uh, scrutiny in and made sure if they did have an engine seal on it uh, from the night before and then also to uh, just do same systems in case something happens but everything should be good and uh, wait for Lockie to bring the car in now they've got the sticker on it <laughs> Uh, new national champ. How's that sound, bud? Classic uh, champ, and now the hills one. How's that? Yeah, no, pretty cool. Where's that ring? Give us a little bit of that. Woo, baby. Um, real quick, mate. That was like one of the fastest A mains I've ever seen. What was it like? Forty laps? Was that just like hot lapping? Um, well, yeah. I guess when I won the classic, it went forty laps non-stop as well. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. That <laughs> I guess both both those races I've won now has gone forty laps green the whole way, and um, one I led from the front, one I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I was really standing up. <laughs> Fucking on the back of it. <laughs> I almost wheel standing into the side of him when he came around the outside. I was like, oh! I've on the sky. That was the old number seven. Oh really? The old Jason White motor. Oh, That's really? what we put in after the other one. That was our smallest motor we put back in. After the other one blew up in the classic. Thanks. Alright, real quick, I'll let you go. Um, just congrats, mate, and Thank I can't you. wait to see the number one on the car. Thanks. Thank Good you. Morning. Well, there you have it. You heard from the Australian team. I'm in the car park. I'm absolutely knackered. What a week of racing. Lockie McHugh is the new 2024 Australian Spring Car Champion. He has been struggling but had a fast car all week. And that was probably one of the fastest A mains I've ever watched, but what a hell of a race. It really just showed, I'm lucky with Brock Hallett, but the top five cars in the country went at it. And yeah, what an Australian champ we have now, Lockie. And he's going to really travel with that. Hopefully he has more luck down the east, uh, the east coast, or south, sorry. But he'll take that back up to Toowoomba and uh, can't wait to watch it. I think it's next week, Toowoomba is maybe. So we get to see that A1 real quick. Uh, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it to any other Speedway lovers because uh, Eastern Creek opens and also if I get to travel more we're going to do a lot more series like this of big events.